Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Fave, and today I'm unboxing something that I'm super excited about. So I'm gonna keep this short cause I'm dying to get in there. Stationery Pal sent me a huge box of fun art supplies and I am dying to see what's in here and try them out. So let's jump right in and start. Okay, so here's the package. Stationery Pal reached out to me and asked if I would like some things from their website. So I got to pick out a few and they're also giving me some other stuff that I don't know. So I'm so excited to open this. Um, if I was gifted this back in 2016 when I was like just getting into calligraphy and watercolor, my mind would be blown. Like I was looking for a lot of this stuff when I was first starting out and it wasn't as easily as accessible as it is now. So I'm so excited to show you guys this. Let's just get to it because it's it's killing me. All right, holy moly, there's a lot of stuff in here. So first things I see, stickers. Who doesn't love stickers? <gasps> so fun, lots of different, you know, holidays and seasonal stuff which is awesome can i also just mention that the, this bubble wrap is in the shape of hearts that's pretty cool um ooh, some fun colored sticky notes which i will definitely be using in my bullet journal more oh my god look at all the stickers oh my god this is so fun okay <laughs> art supplies watercolor stickers okay this is definitely going in my bullet journal i'm so excited for that Okay, there's just so much stuff in here. I don't even know where to start. Okay, ooh, water brushes. Ooh, okay, so there's a bunch of them. Water brushes, which I actually used when I first started out with watercolor. These are great for taking with you on the go. Instead of having a water cup, you just have the water in the actual brush. Um, so I'll definitely have to do like a demonstration with these, but I haven't used these in years and I loved them when I first started out with them. Ooh, watercolor stickies. Definitely using this in my bullet journal. I love these, look how pretty they are. More stickers, I love this stuff. Guys, this is like a freaking dream. I love all the sticky notes, love the stickers. This is so cute. Okay, what else we got? More stickers. Yes. Correction tape is always great to have. And Tombow is a great brand, so you know that's gonna be good. Watercolor paper. So I actually requested this because I am planning to do a video um, comparing different cotton watercolor papers, and this is 100% cotton. So I was really into this, really wanted to try it out. So you're definitely gonna see this in a future video comparing it to other watercolor cotton papers. So I'm so excited. Let me know if you guys have tried this paper before because I have never, um, and what your thoughts are on it. There's so many things in here, guys. Holy, what are these? Watercolor brushes? <gasps> okay. Ooh. Oh, they come out this way. Okay, I'm gonna have to. Should I open them now? Yeah. Their brushes are always good. <gasps> they're so pretty and they're pink. Look how cute those are. Definitely eager to try these. Those look like a lot of fun. Awesome. So the brand for these are Martini. I don't know. They're artist grade watercolor brushes. Um, definitely gonna have to try these out in a video too. Maybe I'll try them out in this one. Don't know yet, but that is super fun. Love, love brushes. Can't have enough brushes. Oh my God, there's still more stuff. Okay. Okay, so I requested these because I love the Pentel brush pens. They are, to me, as good as the Tombow Furunosuke brush pen, which I love. So I have, this one is like my go-to brush pen, but I also have a black one in these Pentel ones and they're they're great. So I really wanted to try these in different colors because look how pretty they are. So definitely gonna use these in my bullet journal. So excited to test them out and swatch them. Guys, I got a glue stick. <laughs> if you watch my bullet journal videos, you know that I've been using this same crusty glue stick from the dollar store for years and it's like not good. I got a glue stick. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> and then I got a small one too, which is great. Okay, what is this? Ooh, yes, washi tape. Okay. I feel like you can never have enough washi tape, right? Let's look at this. And you guys know, if you've been watching my bullet journal videos, I have been really into borders and stuff with my washi tape. Look at those colors. 
They're so pretty. Look at that. Those are gorgeous. All right. Ooh. Okay. So pearl watercolors. I have a bunch of the metallic, like gold and silver colors, but I've never actually owned colored metallic or pearlescent watercolors. Ooh. Okay. So I'm definitely going to have to try these out for you guys because that looks like a good time. A lot of fun. Okay. Ooh. And then Faber Castell watercolors, which I was also interested in trying. Um, just because I am a watercolor channel and they had watercolor supplies on their website. I was like, I can't walk away without trying some watercolor stuff. So that's why I got the paper and these Faber Castell watercolors, which we will definitely have to try out and swatch as well. So I'm excited about that. And then lastly, a special pencil case to hold a bunch of this stuff because it's necessary. And I believe it's extendable. So I can put a bunch of my pens in there, erasers, whatever I need. Yes, so it extends a bit bigger too. So if you need that extra space, you got it, which is awesome. All right, now let's get to testing some of this stuff. Okay, so there's a ton of stuff to try out here. I'm gonna save the stickers, the washi tape, the glue stick and the correction tape for one of my bullet journal videos, just cause I think it'll be more appropriate for one of those videos, but I am gonna test out for you the brush tip pens, the watercolor paper. I'm not gonna do a review of this because I am gonna do that paper comparison video, but I do wanna try the Faber-Castell watercolors and the pearlescent watercolors, as well as showing you how to use some of these water brushes. So let's start. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is swatch these brush tip pens that I I've been dying to try. I love the colors they come in, so we're gonna see how they perform. I'm just gonna do them in my bullet journal at the back where I've done a couple tester pages for some of my other pens. It's just perfect paper to do it on, so that's what we're doing. All right, so let's start. Okay, so there's a close up of all the colors. They're so pretty. And I know I'm gonna get asked if I could do a tutorial on how to write like this. You guys, I learned from the Happy Ever Crafter and she has a whole channel with so many videos on how to write with calligraphy, so many tips, and she's the pro. That's where I learned it from. So I will link her channel below. But if you wanna learn how to write like this, definitely check her out. Okay, so I absolutely love these pens. I love the colors. I'm so using them in my bullet journal. They are so beautiful and they are easy to use. It's funny, when I first started calligraphy back in 2016, I found it so hard to find appropriate brush pens. I had to go all the way downtown to like a little art store. They didn't have them at Michael's. I wasn't big on Amazon at that time and it's just, it was so hard to find. And now I feel like you can find these anywhere and they are actually really great priced, especially on Stationery Pals website. Now I want to try out this paper and opening it, I don't think that's the paper, I think that's like the cover. It is a block, so you are going to have to separate the pages. It's different actual paper underneath. <laughs> I haven't I haven't tried a cotton paper that I haven't liked before, so let's, let's see how this goes. I'm also going to try out some of these brushes because I think that's appropriate to try the watercolor paper with the watercolor brushes. And in this set you get five round brushes in a size five, two, one, three, and zero. And it looks like a flat wash brush. 
Um, so let's let's test them out. And I think maybe I'll test out these pearl watercolors on them. So we're just testing three products at once. Okay, so these were also very cheap. Um, doesn't look like they come with a case, which is interesting. Uh, maybe the refills. So let's let's test it out. So if you're not sure, brand new brushes usually come like with this like glue. So they're very, very hard. Just put it in water and dab it around and that will come right off and then it should be ready to go. So I'm gonna swatch these. I'm actually gonna, oops. I'm gonna put some clean water in this just to help activate it. And we'll see what they look like. Oh, that is pigmented. I wasn't expecting that. That's pretty. Cool. That's very pigmented. Red. Very pretty. And actually, it's a little hard to tell on this paper, and I feel like maybe I shouldn't waste this paper with swatches. Let's see how easy this lifts. Okay. <laughs> it actually does an okay job at lifting. I actually want to save this for the regular watercolors. I'll have a better idea of how this performs with regular watercolors. So let's, let's switch up the paper and test it on something else. I'm going to use Canson paper, my cheap watercolor paper. Okay, so let's do those swatches again. And so far these brushes are nice. Like they're not stiff like I usually like them, but for swatching right now, they're okay. I actually have to test them out with real watercolor, like practice. Um, these are super pigmented. I was not expecting this and they're so fun. I just got to figure out what I would actually paint with these. Um, but I did ask for them because I didn't have any pearlescent colorful colors and they had them. So I was like, I got to try it. But look how pretty they are. What could I paint with these? And we'll have to see how they dry too. And a nice white. Okay, so these are super pigmented and really beautiful, fun to use. If you guys have any ideas of what I could actually paint with these, please let me know in the comments below. Pearlescent watercolors are usually not my thing, um, but I wanna give it a try and paint something fun. So give me some ideas in the comments. Okay, so while I have paper out here to swatch, we're gonna swatch these Faber-Castell watercolors. Uh, I know the company, I have their erasers. Um, I know they make a lot of colored pencils and stuff. Watercolors I haven't tried or necessarily seen too much of, so I'm curious to see how these perform. Looks like they come with a swatching card, um, but I'm just gonna swatch them on here. So it comes in this nice red case. And here they are. Oh, and it comes with a water brush too. So that's interesting. At first glance, they don't look like a chalky watercolor. Um, but they look nice, there's 24 colors. I'm not gonna use the water brush right now. I wanna continue with these brushes. So let's let's just do it. I'm gonna take my water spray bottle and just activate them by spraying them. And let's start swatching.
Okay, so we're done swatching and immediately I can see that some of these are very opaque and like this one almost looks like a gouache to me. I'm going to see how it dries and like that one too. Um, they're very pretty colors, uh, but I don't know how good of like a watercolor they are. Um, the instructions and everything about them are in a different language, so I can't, I can't read it, but that's them. So it might be like a fine like beginner tool, but I really have to see what they look like when they're dry to give a better judgment. Now I'm kind of thinking I should have, you know, drawn a black line on the paper first just to see how opaque they are because they are looking like a lot of them are drawing, drying very opaque, um, which is not necessarily a characteristic in watercolor that you want. So I don't think they're high quality, but they're fun. I mean, let's see. I'm also going to see how easily they're reactivated once dry, because in my opinion, better watercolors, like you should be able to do another layer of water or watercolor over it without it lifting up that first layer. So I have a feeling just because of how opaque they are, that these are going to lift if you paint over it. So we will test these out once these dry. Okay, now I want to test out this paper, but with my watercolors, I am going to use these brushes too, just to test them out a bit further. Um, but yeah, I'm really interested in the paper. 100% cotton is usually the way to go with watercolors. So I'm curious to see how it's going to hold up. I will do a proper paper comparison, like I said, um, with this compared to other papers. But for now, let's just see how it holds up. So I'm going to use this size five round brush and we're just going to play around and see what we can make. So I'm already noticing that this feels a lot softer than I'm used to. Um, look how big that is. But I mean, it handles nicely. It's definitely a lot softer than I like with my brushes, but I mean, it's definitely manageable too. Okay, so the paper, it doesn't have a lot of texture to it, so I don't, it's, kind of performing a little bit like cans and watercolor paper I have to say so right off the bat I don't feel like it's the best quality um, even though it's 100% cotton which I'm surprised with because like I said I haven't met a cotton paper that I haven't liked yet yeah the watercolor is kind of just sitting on top it's not really soaking in like other yeah, this is weird. Okay, so it's not great quality paper, but I mean, it's still fun and I can definitely do lots of swatches on them. Um, but yeah, the paint is not soaking in. It's reacting a lot like a Canson XL paper. Like you can kind of just tell by looking at it. But it was very cheap and it could be great for practice paper. Um, it's not great quality for practice, paper and it's like I said it's very similar to Canson so it might be a little bit frustrating like you can see the streakiness and that's not the watercolors that's definitely the paper because these are high my Princeton these are my Windsor and Newton professional watercolors so it's definitely the paper um ah heck I wouldn't recommend this paper I'm just gonna say it I wouldn't recommend this paper you might as well get Canson or if this is cheaper for you you can get this because it's very similar see yeah the bleed like it just sits on top of the paper so that's why a lot of the colors aren't bleeding properly you know what I mean it's a little weird okay I'm gonna stop there because I think it's just frustrating I can already tell you that it's not great but it was something and it was a fun little thing to try and I will definitely use it for like swatching colors and stuff like that um and there you go okay so as for the brushes like I said um they are definitely a lot softer than I like so they wouldn't be my preferred brushes. They're nice though, and they're pretty and they're pink. Um, but if you like a softer brush, they are very affordable. So I would recommend them if you're not looking to spend a lot of money. And it's a nice little variety of sizes and stuff. So yeah, if you're into that softer brush, these are definitely a good option. Okay, so lastly, we're gonna be talking about the water brushes. So funny, I just filmed this and my my phone wasn't recording, so I already opened them and used them. You just didn't see it. So these three that they gave me are the Zig Brush H2O. Um, and I used to own brushes like this back in the day when I first started. And what you do is you fill up 
the barrel here with water. Now these ones are different than what I used to use. Um, it says on the instructions, because like see there's a little hole there, you put it upside down, you squeeze, like there's these little push areas, you squeeze and then you let go and then it sucks up the water. I'm finding it hard to get the water in there. It's not sucking up a lot of water and then I have to keep refilling it. So the ones I used to use were like the ones that the Faber-Castell um, palette came with where you twist it off and you just fill it up in the sink or whatever and it holds a lot of water. So maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I'm not getting a whole lot of water. And I've already like just played around with these on camera and it wasn't recording. So I'll just do it again quickly for you. So the fun thing about these is that you can take them on the road with you. So if you have like a travel palette and like a little pad of paper, um, you don't really need much of a water jar. So when you squeeze, the water comes out. So you can go right into your palette, squeeze the water out, wet up your paints, and then start painting. So I got these like broad flat wash tips. I got two of those and then I got a round brush tip. And then to clean it, usually in a jar or a cup, you would do that. But what you can do if you have enough water to refill is you can kind of just squeeze it on your paper towel to get the water flowing and then clean it like that if you're on the go. But then you kind of need like a bottle of water with you to refill it. So these are fun if you are, you know, painting outside or on the go. So I will just show you with the Faber-Castell one, the round tip. I actually really like the tips and I used to do calligraphy with these because the flow is really nice. So I'll just write the word hi here. This was like a big thing when I first started watercolor and calligraphy. I was really into these brushes. But yeah, they're super fun to use and great for on the go. So there you go. Don't really need to swatch anymore. And like I said, if you want to clean it without a jar or something like that, just keep pressing water. And there you go. You got a clean brush. Okay, so quickly before I finish, I did want to test out these watercolors, um, how they activate again if you are to go over them. So if you wanted to do another wash over top, I want to see how easily it will lift. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. And they're not the greatest quality, these watercolors. I mean, I would definitely give these probably to my kid um, to play around with. They're, they're fine for that. Same with like the Artist Loft palette, but you shouldn't be able to do that with your watercolors. You should be able to do another like wet layer without it reactivating again, which like I said, kind of reminds me of a gouache. So they're not the best quality. I will warn you about that, but if they're in your price range and that's all you can afford right now, I started with that really cheap Artist Loft palette and that's what kind of kickstarted my love for watercolor and art. So do whatever works for you, but I will just tell you they're not the highest quality watercolors. Okay, so there's all the supplies that I tried. I have to say that the Pentel Brush pens are definitely my favorite. I'm gonna be using them all the time. These brushes are actually not too bad. Um, they're not my go-to brushes, but for a beginner, they're pretty well priced. And if you just want like a cute like pink brush, go for it. The metallic pearl watercolors are definitely a lot of fun. Like I said about the Faber-Castell paints, they're not the best quality, but they're fine for a start. The water brushes are fun for if you're on the go. The paper, not the best if this is more affordable or you have better access to this paper over Canson XL I'd say go for it because it's very similar um, but yeah those are my final thoughts on all the products and I had so much fun unboxing these and I can't wait to try out the rest of the stuff in my next bullet journal video Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Also, I've gotten a few comments about this headband and I just wanted to give a little shout out to Twist of Grey. They are a small business in Ontario who make these beautiful headbands and I'm totally obsessed because I need a little bit of style in my life and I love them. So I just wanted to give a little shout out to them and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a wonderful day. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for even more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.